and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the top 10 cards to buff for patch 211 that's going to be coming up this week. And I guess by the time it's on YouTube, it's going to be up tomorrow. At least we'll know what the patch changes are. This is a little bit more difficult to put this list together than just looking at cards to nerf. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, let me know if there's any other cards you would like to see buffed, any ones that I missed. Also, just any of these changes or the changes to the nerfs, love to hear the discussion about what y'all think of them, if these were the changes, because these would be the changes that I'd be making if I was in charge of the um, you know, balance patch changes. We're not gonna see all these, of course, and it'd be real interesting to see what we do have uh, happening for patch 211. But let's get to the list. Here are 10 cards that I would like to see buffed. At number 10, we just have a real easy one here. Like I said, it was kind of hard to find 10, but uh, we're gonna start with Incisive Tactician. This card's a four five that cares about reputation, right? If you do have the reputation, it only costs six when I'm summoned rally. The big problem that I have with this card, of course, is that it just doesn't help enable reputation by itself. It has four power reputation. You need five power. You need to have an ally strike for five plus damage. This card is already expensive enough as is. I just don't really understand why it can't help out with your reputation because maybe you have this card in hand that you play it before you actually have reputation, which is fine. Whenever you summon it for eight mana, you will still rally. I just don't understand why it doesn't just also have five power itself. I think that'd be a very easy thing to do. Just make this a five five. That's our first card on the list at number 10. At number nine, we have Weight of Judgment, which right now is four mana dealing two to a champion, seven to a follower at slow speed. I have talked to quite a bit about how I really want this card to be able to do three damage to a champion. There are just so many champions that have three health that you really want to be able to kill with Weight of Judgment, and you can't. And right now, I think that that's what uh, Sharima kind of needs is a little bit better removal to be able to help out your Buried Sun Disk decks because those Buried Sun Disk decks, same with Zillion decks, want to play a longer game because uh, you know you want to have a lot of rounds to be able to um, count down your Buried Sun Disk. So you want to play a longer game, but there isn't really the tools to enable you to play the longer game right now with Sharima. That could change. We do have more Sharima cards coming up in the latest expansion. But to start with, I would like to, a little bit of a rework with Weight of Judgment. So it does two to, a, two to a champion, seven to a follower. I've talked about how like we could change it to, if we want to deal three to a champion, it could be three to a champion, six to a follower. But the more that I've thought about it, honestly, I don't think that there's anything wrong with dealing three to a champion and seven to a follower. That seven to a follower is a good number to have, cards like Eclipse Dragon and things like that. So. I think that it would honestly be perfectly fine at three and seven. And I think we could actually also make this even better by changing it from slow speed to fast speed. There are a lot of fast speed damage spells looking around, especially four mana ones that are doing three damage to champions. That's not difficult. Even Targon. Targon doesn't do any damage, but they got ground slam. Targon got ground slam at four mana, fast speed. It's stunning and doing three damage to anything. So why not Shirima that has more things with damage and that cares about damage a little bit more, why not um, have Shirima have a fast speed spell that can do three to a champion, but instead of having the stun part, you then get the seven to a follower. So you get additional damage to a follower. I think that would just make sense. I think that this could be perfectly fine at fast speed at three and seven. If you really, you know, since we're buffing up the damage should be three to a champion and we're buffing it up to fast speed. If you want to then reduce the follower damage to six instead of seven, perfectly fine with me. But I think the weight of judgment could just be a better overall spell to help out your buried sun disc and your zillion decks. At number eight, we have armed gearhead, a card that um, I would actually really like this buff. So right now, if you look at armed gearhead, it's a one mana one, one with quick attack. So it has a keyword. And then it also has the ability to add on the power. Think about what we talked about with Sparring Student um, over in the, the video with the nerfs when we we're talking about nerfing some cards. We talked about how there's one mana cards that are one twos that have the ability to have their power grow. And that's what I talked about how I wanted Sparring Student to be a one two, they would grow its power. 
and then you have your Bakai Reaper, your Flower Child, your Green Glade Caretaker, your Astute Academic, all these cards that are one twos that then for one mana that then have their power grow. And I think that's what Armed Gearhead should be, honestly. I think this should be a one two. Let's let's buff it up to be two health instead of one health, so it doesn't just die to your Withering Whales and Vile Feasts and everything like that by itself. And then it can keep the keyword, and then it can have its power grow with the augment keyword as well. So it, it could be kind of similar to your Bakai Reaper. That's like a one-two with a keyword, you know, that has the fearsome, that has the power grow. You know, with the Bakai Reaper, you need to slay units. With Arm Gearhead, you have to play created cards. I think that could be just a really good um, buff to this. That would also help out your your Victor decks in particular. Um, and it could be really nice. So that's what, uh, let's let's do that one. I think this that would be one that I'd be very excited about. Because I like Armed Gearhead, and I want to play more Armed Gearhead. But being a 1-1, one, one, oh, that 1 health is pretty rough. Let's change Armed Gearhead to be a 1-2 instead of a 1-1. One, one. At number 7, we have Sunk Cost. This is definitely a card that could use a buff. It's an 8-mana slow speed spell place a unit or a landmark into its deck. So placing a unit or a landmark into the deck, that is a uh, more powerful effect than if you think about Vengeance, that is just kill a unit, right? Like, um, because this, this can affect units or landmarks, and generally taking one of those and putting it into the deck is a better effect than just killing it because then you deny any kind of last breath effects um, or anything like that. So, you know, like that's a little bit better, but we're we're making it from 7 to 8 mana and from fast speed to slow speed. Both of those things kind of make the card unplayable. As you know, you've probably never, ever seen anybody have sunk cost in a deck, and that makes sense because it's just too expensive at 8 mana. You're basically looking at ruination at this point, you know, at 8 mana, and at slow speed, it's just too much. So how can we buff this thing up? Well, you can obviously you can reduce the cost. You can make it fast speed instead of slow speed. All those kind of things. But I have a better suggestion, and this is again thanks to Twitch chat. This wasn't one that I thought of, but I love this suggestion. So what if we add on to sunk cost to try to make it a little bit more playable, where the text will say, "Place a unit or landmark into its deck, comma, create two treasures in your deck." Now we're talking, right? Because we could get a little bit more treasure synergy in the game. Treasures are a lot of fun. There's not very many ways to create treasures. Um, and that could be just another way to create some treasures and uh, maybe make this card something that you kind of want to have. And I think it also fits very thematically into this. You know, it's a sunk cost. Maybe you're like sinking the ship and then you're putting treasures in your deck so like over time right by the time you draw it it turns into treasure right because you, you're gonna get like your treasures from your uh sunken ship over time i don't know it kind of i think that fits very th thematically and could be a really cool change um i don't you know it's not going to make sunk cost like turn into like some amazing card that's played like at the top of the metagame or anything like that right so it's not gonna like move the needle in like the metagame stuff but it could add on a really cool card for treasure decks and people trying to make some really fun at treasure decks and could give them some some good interaction so there we go let's let's take a card that's not playable whatsoever and make it fun and make it like where you can actually play it in some fun decks so let's have sunk cost not only do exactly what it's doing right now but then also create two treasures in your deck that's card to buff number seven at number six we got katarina and actually for the rest of the list Numbers one through six are going to be ways to either buff directly or indirectly some different champions in the game that could use some buffs. Because, you know, why not buff some champions? This one's a little controversial, I think, from at least from discussing it with Twitch chat, but one that a buff that I would really like to see. And that's going to be for Katarina. Keep everything the same. But level 2 Katarina currently costs 4 mana, and I really want to see level 2 Katarina also cost 3 mana, just like the level 1. So that's going to allow you to have um, 3, you know, if, if you're later on in the game, for 9 mana, you'd be able to summon Katarina 3 times. So you get 3 of these um, Rally, then Strike, Recall Me, Rally again, and so on. I honestly think that would be a very good change for Katarina. I think that that would help make Katarina a little bit more playable than it is now. I think at four mana, it's pretty tough. I, 
I've heard from some people like in chat that think that that's way too good. You can't rally that much for Katarina. You're spending three mana for a rally plus your four three quick attack. That's too good. But we're talking about the level two of a champion. We're talking about a champion that does have a good amount of opportunity cost and downside to it. Because it's not just you always have three mana to then just have your four three quick attack rally, right? Like it, it's more difficult than that. And there's more downside. First, you're taking up a champion slot in your deck. You're not just playing Relentless Pursuit for three mana that doesn't take one of your champion spots. Katarina does. Second, you don't just get level two right away. So you have to first start with your level one. You have to spend three mana for a champion that while you do get the whole Blades Edge thing, it's still it's still spending mana to just re once it strikes, it just recalls it to just put it back in your hand. So while you're spending mana to essentially do nothing, right? Because you just played it, attack for three, put it back in your hand, you're not affecting the board whatsoever. Your opponent is spending their mana and and playing out to the board. So you kind of have like this upfront cost of three mana that you have to spend just to, to level up your champion, but it still keeps it in your hand. It doesn't affect the board. So then at that point, once you've, once you've, once you've done that, once you've paid your upfront cost and had your Katarina level up, which again is the absolute best case scenario, that's assuming that they didn't do anything to affect that. Then at that point, then you can spend three mana and get your Katarina that rallies and um, you know has its four three quick attack that can strike and recall me and do all that. So you know like that's not easy to pull off. And what I'm talking about with the opportunity cost and the downside is that it's not a spell that you're playing here. This is a unit that's very easy to interact with. Your opponent can play the card Mystic Shot. Your Katarina is dead. You know your opponent can Frostbite your Katarina. Now it's not striking and now it's not recalling. Plus they could just block it, Frostbite it. That kind of stuff. They can use they can use hush. They can use just all sorts of removal that there is in the game and kill your Katarina. It's it's a very easy champion to interact with. It's a tough one to get the um, to get like the full bonus on, and it costs a lot of mana. You have to like invest mana first before you can get that level two ability. Usually, you can be like, well, that's every champion, right? You invest mana in any of your champion before you get the level two. Yes, but your other champions are staying on the board. They are attacking and blocking and, you know, affecting the board. Katarina goes back to your hand after it strikes. And so it's not affecting the board. So you have to then, again, invest more mana. Therefore, this makes this a pretty difficult champion to play. It's definitely not a champion that's easy to play on round three and stay ahead because you're, you're going to get behind if you play it immediately on round three because you're not affecting the board. So it's it's not... So it's a difficult champion to play. It's a difficult champion to really build around. And again, even though you get like those cool rally effects, that's taking up a champion slot. Those are the most valuable slots in your deck. All of that to say, all of that is to say that I think that we can make this a more powerful champion and a better champion. And I think that's the best way to do it. Let's just get this level two to be three mana. I don't think that's going to make Katarina just catapult. <laughs> Katarina catapult to the top of the metagame or anything like that but I think it would make it a um a, a better champion to play and I think it would make the uh, play patterns a little bit more like the payoff a little stronger how that enables you to play it three times in a round because you have to you know get to that point of the game it's not easy to do and it's not easy to get to that payoff so there we go that's that's uh um number six here on cards to buff Katarina. At number five, we have Quinn, gonna be our next champion to talk about. Talked about a few different ways to try to help out Quinn, because right now, Quinn's very close, right? Like you had the scout stack with Misfortune and Quinn that was good for a while, um, but now we've kind of had some better uh, aggro decks take over the metagame since then. But still, it's really close to being good, but maybe not quite there. You have like your 3-4 body with Quinn, and you have your 2-1 with Valor that comes in right away. So if you're looking at it, you add them up, you're like, all right, well, you get 5-5 five, five worth of stats between two bodies. That's normal. Like for 5 mana, that sounds pretty good. But again, remember that Legends of Runeterra is a game where you do have limited board space, only having the six spots. So there are times like where that can actually be a downside instead of a benefit uh, splitting up your power and health between two bodies so both things have scout 
Um, so thought about a few different ways to, to help this out. One way was just to kind of add on just a little bit to the Quinn, make it a 3-5, make it a little easier to uh, keep it alive with attacking. I think that could still probably work with the Valor. That's one option. But the option that I would recommend instead of that, maybe just keep it 3-4. But honestly, let's add in a keyword to Quinn. I think Quinn could have Challenger as well. Because I think it could just be, I think it could be just like Valor. Challenger, Scout. Uh, we've seen champions that have Challenger and have other keywords, right? Like Vi has Challenger and Tough. I think Quinn can have Challenger and Scout. And I think that could that could kind of work, right? Like it just it just feels like Challenger fits very well with Quinn, and maybe that will help you attack with Quinn a little bit better, where you can challenge small things and make it so they don't block with their larger units, and maybe that can help you keep your Quinn alive. We've also seen from the latest expansion that's about to come out, there's a new four mana unit. I don't remember the name of it, but it's a four mana three two that whenever it attacks it uh, buffs up your challengers that are attacking gives them plus one plus one um, so maybe that will also kind of help out Quinn just a tad bit but I think that could that could be a nice little change here to Quinn um, giving it another keyword and I, I just feel like I feel like challenger with Quinn is something that fits very thematically especially since Valor has both challenger and scout I think that could just kind of be very synergistic having both of these uh, cards having challenger and scout so that'd be a nice little buff that i'd like to see to quinn and just kind of see how it plays after that at number four we have a combo of cards here i want to talk about lulu and picks i wanted to find a way to kind of buff up lulu a little bit not much i kind of like where it's at but then also i kind of want to buff up picks because right because picks at zero or sorry at one mana for a zero two support give my support to ally plus two plus one this round not a card that we really see um, ever, right? Like, nobody's putting picks into their deck, getting a 0-2 for one mana. But then again, Lulu really cares about picks, of course, because, you know, you have, like, your um, help picks and just the voice lines that Lulu has has a lot about picks and things like that. So I kind of feel like we could maybe do something here. So this is what I recommend. Um, first step... I think is maybe change picks instead of being one mana change picks to be zero mana because again we want to keep picks at zero power honestly because i think that that kind of works flavor wise i don't think that you want to have picks be um you know have power and at one mana you kind of want it to be a one two right at one mana but let's let's not have that so let's have picks be zero mana still be a zero two but with since it's going to cost since it's only going to cost zero let's change the support to give my supported ally plus one plus one this round okay so this would give us a zero mana support unit and that could uh be really nice because then you could have like a flower child that's a one mana unit and you could play picks at zero mana so round one if you have the attack token you could have picks support flower child and you could get a nice attack in immediately on round one you would be able to attack for four it would be a two card combo uh, we've seen we have two card combos right now that can attack for five on round one with Doomkeeper plus Ravenous Butcher, but it would be a two two card combo. But also half of that combo is you're playing a zero two, right? That your if your opponent plays any like one mana two one, then they just block your picks and your picks is dead, <laughs> right? So it's and you're you're down a card immediately. So I don't think that that would be too good or anything. I don't think you'd be like, man, that's too busted to have because we're talking at the end of the day we're talking about a zero two. But that, that would be allow you to like support immediately on round one. It would help your Lulu level up. And I think that could be pretty nice. And you, So that's the first change. Let's change picks to be zero mana. It's a zero two, and it, but it only gives plus one, plus one, not plus two, plus one. Okay, so that's halfway. The reason why I want to make that change is because then Lulu can then, whenever, could have a play ability. So whenever we play Lulu, it could create a picks in hand. Think about how we just talked about Katarina a little bit ago. You play Katarina, you, you create the Blade's Edge in hand. It's fleeting, but that, that doesn't matter. Um, with Lulu, we could create a picks in hand. You know, it doesn't have to be fleeting. It could just be a normal one. If you want it to be fleeting, it can be. That doesn't matter. Because uh, you can just play it because it's zero mana. But that, that could be really nice. We're on like round three. You can play Lulu. Your opponent plays something. Then you can play picks um, for zero mana that you just get get to, you know, you create your pick, get to play a picks. And that could be just a really nice Lulu support. 
because of that if you need to change the level up to be allies have been supported four plus times instead of three plus times that's acceptable if if you find like they that uh, because of those play patterns that lulu needs to be four instead of three for the level up i could understand that uh, but i think that could be a nice little buff there for lulu and it'd be really cool flavor wise right because you because lulu and pix go together let's have lulu create a pix so i was thinking how can we do that how can we have lulu create a pix and have it like work out well Let's do that. Let's make it a zero cost pick. So you can play Lulu, then play your picks. Um, so therefore, if it's a zero cost, still keep it zero power, but then make it give plus one, plus one this round. I think that could just be a really cool little buff and uh, wouldn't make it too broken or anything like that, but be really nice flavor wise to have. So then at, as was just pointed out in Twitch chat, this change would also have it where whenever you have picks support Lulu, it turns Lulu into a 4-4 because you get the plus one plus one. And, or if you have Lulu support picks, Lulu will turn picks into a 4-4. So you have the nice synergy there also between the two. And just kind of perfect all the way around. So that's gonna be uh, number four on our cards to buff, kind of Lulu and picks together. At number two, for our countdown for cards to buff, we have Tom Kench. And this was a tough one. I wanted to try to figure out some way to buff Tom Kench, but not necessarily buff like Twisted Fate. And so it was really tough. You know, obviously you can always like reduce the cost and add add in power and health and all that kind of stuff. But I don't want to just do that. I think like it's kind of nice at four mana two six. It kind of makes a lot of sense. So thinking about like different ways to buff up Tom Kench, and this is what I got. So how about the acquired taste? So you have the acquired taste. Um, is this uh, spell that every round start you're creating the acquire taste in hand acquire taste means that tom kench can swallow an enemy unit strike him then he captures it the buff that i could see happening here that i think would be really nice would make this acquire taste be able to swallow any unit not just enemy units you can swallow your own units if you want with the acquired taste of course the bayou brunch swallows your own you know your allies already but then you gain then tom kench gains the stats from the allies this would be like where tom kench doesn't gain the stats but of course once you capture some uh you know allies or enemies you do you do release the allies whenever tom kench levels up and then of course um attack when you have your leveled up tom kench attack you you uh release the allies so this will allow you to do any kind of summon effects multiple times you know, card like Avros and Hearth Guard. I don't know, that's the first one I thought of, that you could get that summon effect again. Uh, but then also, if your opponent doesn't have any enemies for Tom Kench to capture, you can capture your own allies. Or maybe you have some allies that have like zero power, like that Targon one that Soraka Tom Kench plays, and you want to just, you know, swallow that to help your Tom Kench level up. Instead of like your opponent's just playing like a whole bunch of large enemies that's difficult for you to uh, swallow. You can, you know, have your acquired taste do that. I think just adding in that little bit of versatility could just be a nice little buff to Tom Kench because I wanted to have some kind of buff somewhere. So uh, those of y'all on YouTube, if you got other ideas for ways to buff Tom Kench that wouldn't necessarily be buffing uh, Twisted Fate, I would be all ears for it. Uh, but that was that's what we're kind of thinking of here with the acquired taste is uh, you know let it swallow any kind of unit, ally or enemy, whatever you want, give you that versatility. So Musehead in chat has uh, something here that says that if should acquire taste be slightly changed, so it's swallow a unit, if it's an enemy, it strikes him, and that's definitely an option. That would maybe make, I don't know if that would make it like too good where you could swallow your own units and they're not striking Tom Kench, but that's definitely an option because you don't have like the um, ally stat buffs that like the Bayou Brunch gives you whenever you just use the acquired taste. So that, that's definitely an option too, right? If we wanna make it just a little bit better where you can swallow your own um, units and then it do, like those ones don't deal damage to Tom Kench whenever you do it because they're allies. I think that also, that works really well. Because people say with League of Legends that Tom Kench is like eating your own allies quite a bit for different stuff. And so I think that that could just, you know, that works flavor wise and everything too, right? It makes lore wise to have your acquired taste like where Tom Kench can eat either your enemies or your allies. So I'd be perfectly fine with that too. Make it so only the enemies strike. That's That sounds good to me too. And finally, number one on the list of cards to buff 
I would choose Yone. And the reason why I would choose Yone is because I think Yasuo could deserve a buff. Everybody talks about wanting a Yasuo buff. Lots of people like playing Yasuo decks. But to be honest, Yasuo, the card, 4 mana, 4-4, four, four, quick attack, does all this stuff. I really don't think there's anywhere to buff the card Yasuo. What I think that you could buff is the package around Yasuo and just maybe some different stun or recall cards or just different ways, different cards in a Yasuo deck that could be buffed. And what I would choose here would be Yone. Yone is at 7 mana and it does have the playability to stun it to enemies. What I would do here is change Yone so it also read play, stun two enemies, and draw a Yasuo. So you would you would have it where Yone draws Yasuo. So it would be just like all of the other boats that are in the game. There's also the new card uh, for Shen that's drawing a Shen in the latest expansion. Because I think that's what you really need for your Yasuo deck. You need to be able to have more ways to get Yasuo in your hand and get Yasuo in play. Because Yasuo makes all of your other stun and recall cards so much better. And so this could be a way to do it. And I think it would make a lot of sense. I think still keep it the same. 7 mana, 6-6, six, six, stun 2 enemies. All that could stay the same. But then also draw a Yasuo. Obviously Yone is not a boat. I don't think Yone is a boat. But, um, you know, Yone and Yasuo, of course, they're, they're brothers. They go together. So I think that that would um, make a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> and no, Talizu, that doesn't mean... <laughs> Talizu says, does that mean you ship Yone and Yasuo? I guess so, because Yone would be a ship then. All right, yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, so I think that would, that would work really well together. Now, does that mean that Yone would need to go to 8 mana? Maybe. Let's keep it at 7 and just see what happens. Does that make Yasuo too good? I really highly doubt it. But that would probably make Yasuo a little bit more playable. And obviously, you can always tweak from there if you need to change any kind of mana costs on Yone if it's, if it's drawing Yasuo. But that could be really cool. I think that would be a really good buff to make and help out the Yasuo decks that everybody wants to make a little better. Look at that, even Puppy is super excited about that change. What do you think, Puppy? Would that be a good change? I think that's what she's, that's what she's up here telling us. All right, so that's gonna be it for the top 10 list of cards to buff. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, of course hit that like button, but leave those comments, let me know what you think about any of these changes, and of course the changes to those cards that I talked about nerfing in the previous video. Love this kind of discussion, love to see those comments. What other cards are there in uh, Runeterra that you would buff, and how would you buff them, or nerf, and anything like that. If these were the changes that were made for patch 211, these 10 nerfs and buffs, what would you think? Um, any of them that you really don't like or, or you really like you, that you think would be great changes, let me know. I'd love to hear it. All right, that's going to be it here for this video. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.